AES is a block cipher and NIST standard released back in the year 2001 and as a block cipher is used together with block cipher modes of operations such as ECB. We are just about to see how we can use AES in Python with the ECB mode of operation and also why ECB as a mode of operation is highly insecure and not recommended to be used in practice. My Python development environment is PyCharm, which is available on the both Linux and Windows, and I trust you to being able to install this on your machines yourselves as well. Using AES as a symmetric encryption system requires us to have a plain text. It also requires us to have a symmetric key. With this symmetric key, we can encrypt the plain text into a ciphertext and with this worry same key, we can decrypt the ciphertext back into the original plaintext. In what now follows, you will see me commenting how I made use of AES behind ECB and how I investigated that AES behind ECB is insecure to be used in practice. Here, I just set the stage for this demo with a main function and verified that I had a working Hello World program. Then I outlined the sequence of steps taking place within a symmetric encryption scheme. Step one in an encryption scheme is to have a plain text to encrypt, and I couldn't think of a better plain text than just simply the name of this course. For later visual reference, I printed this plain text to console. The next step was to create the symmetric key, which in this example I chose to be a 256 bit key and as such, the largest key size you can choose with AES. This key I randomly sampled with the Python OSU random library function, which takes the randomness entropy directly from the operating system. An alternative would have been to take the Python secrets library, which is a wrapper around the same OSU random library function. Urandom samples random bytes, so 256 bits in bytes is 256 divided by 8. In order to encrypt the plain text, I then set out to create an AES ECB cipher object, which I took from the by now recommended Python cryptography library, appropriately called cryptography, which you could, for example, install with pip install cryptography. With this library, I then created the AES ECB cipher as a cipher object by providing the cipher object with the AES block cipher bound to our key and the ECB block cipher mode of operation. This cipher object I then fed with the plain text to have it encrypted on the AES algorithm and behind the ECB mode and to get back a cipher text. Looking at the print of the ciphertext in the console, it's clear that this ciphertext, at least to me, doesn't have any obvious resemblance to the original plaintext. Now, I was decrypting this ciphertext back into the plaintext and printed it to the console in order to check that this really recovered the original plaintext. Surprise! This didn't work, and the recovered plaintext is a cut-off version of the original plaintext. Reason for this is that in order to use ECB properly, the plaintext needs to be a multiple of the 128-bit that AES takes in as a block cipher, but the original plaintext is not a multiple of 128 bits, but 
34 bytes, which is 2 times 128 bits, plus an additional 16 bits. To make this work, the plain text needs to be padded to a multiple of 128 bits, which I did by making use of the PKCS7 padding scheme, which pads data to a required length by adding bytes, each with a value of the number of the bytes that need to be added. In this example, the plain text was missing 14 bytes, so the PKCS7 padding scheme added 14 bytes of value 14, or 0x0e in hex. Having the padded data, I then encrypted this to a ciphertext, which still doesn't resemble the padded plain text in any obvious way. Decrypting this ciphertext then led to the original but still padded plain text. And once I removed this padding, it became clear that by using proper padding, AES behind ECB was indeed properly able to conserve our plaintext through a full cycle of encryption and decryption. To demonstrate that ECP is a highly insecure mode of operation, I then proceeded to encrypting this black and white image of a Mandelbrot fractal given as an image of type PPM. Here I again just outlined the next few steps to take for this demo. Step one was to read the image from disk into memory. The image is of type PPM, which is a very simple file format, starting with a header encoding the dimensions and the coloring of the image, 
and a body containing the actual image. The header of this particular image is 17 bytes long, which I checked beforehand. In order to arrive at a working image, I kept the header as is and proceeded to only encrypt the body of the image with AES and mode ECB. In order to properly use ECB, I first had to pad the body of the image, as I did before for the plain text. Here, I struggled because PyCharm didn't suggest me the image body as I expected, which was due to me having mistyped the name of the variable on line 56. Having fixed that, I could proceed to encrypting the image body with ECB. Then, and in order to arrive at a working image, I assembled the full encrypted image by simply just reusing the image header of the original file and adding to it the now encrypted body of the image. Finally, I saved this new, now with AES ECP encrypted image into a new file called Mandelbrot AES ECP encrypted. This file then emerged in the explorer after my final run of the program. Having the original file and the file encrypted with AES ECB side by side, it's obvious that much of the structure of the original Mandelbrot fractal image can still be seen, which is due to ECB as a mode being deterministic and encrypting equal blocks of input data to equal blocks of the ciphertext, which with this black and white image results in very clearly preserving patterns of the original image over into the encrypted version of the image. I hope that with this demonstration, I managed to convince you that ECB is a highly insecure mode of operation that should at most be used for educational purposes.